A few days ago, some of my friends asked me, is the speed of light really 300,000 kilometers per second? Or is that just a bluff? Has anyone actually measured it? I'm sure many of you have wondered the same because 300,000 kilometers per second is astonishingly fast. It is hard to imagine how anyone could measure something traveling at such an incredible speed. So how did we arrive at this figure? Is it just the result of a calculation or an educated guess? The truth is, the speed of light was measured with impressive accuracy more than a century ago, long before modern high-speed equipment or advanced electronics were available. And the story of how it was done involves one of the cleverest and coolest tricks in science that I have ever seen. In this video, let us explore the historic efforts of scientists who dared to measure the seemingly immeasurable speed of light and the ingenious methods they used to measure it with precision over 100 years ago. Hi friends, welcome to a new episode of Science Simplified for All. For centuries, scientists from around the world studied light and pondered an intriguing question. What is the speed of light? In ancient times, the prevailing belief was that light required no time to travel. It was thought to move instantaneously from one place to another, essentially that its speed was infinite. However, the great scientist and thinker Galileo refused to accept this idea. He proposed that light might have a finite speed and set out to measure it. This marked one of the earliest recorded attempts to determine the speed of light. Galileo and his team devised a clever experiment. They split into two groups and positioned themselves on the tops of two nearby hills, each equipped with a lantern that had a shutter to cover the light when needed. They also carried pendulum-based instruments to measure time. Here is how the experiment worked. One team would remove the shutter from their lantern, allowing the light to travel to the second team on the other hill. As soon as the second person saw the light, they would immediately uncover their own lantern to send light back to the first hill. The goal was to detect a delay in the round trip of light between the two hills using the pendulum-based instruments. However, the distance between the hills was too short, and the reaction times of the participants were far too slow to observe the incredibly short time it takes for light to travel. As a result, they found no measurable delay. Though the experiment failed to measure the speed of light, Galileo did not give up. He turned his attention to using a telescope to study light from distant celestial objects, hoping to find answers there. Unfortunately, he passed away before he could complete this work. In 1676, another scientist named Ole Remer challenged the idea that light travels instantaneously. He proposed that light actually takes time to travel from one place to another. And he reached this conclusion not with fancy equipment, but through meticulous stargazing. Romer focused his observations on Jupiter's moon Io. Jupiter has many moons, but Io caught his attention because it orbits Jupiter every 42.5 hours. As Io orbits, it occasionally passes through Jupiter's shadow, causing eclipses, much like our moon experiences lunar eclipses when it moves into Earth's shadow. Romer began recording the timings of Io's eclipses over weeks, months, and even years. But as he analyzed his data, he noticed something peculiar. The eclipses did not occur at the same intervals throughout the year. When Earth was closer to Jupiter in its orbit, the eclipses happened slightly earlier than expected. Conversely, when Earth was farther away, the eclipses occurred later. After careful analysis, Rumor realized that this timing difference was not due to variations in Io's orbit. Instead, it was caused by the time it took for light from Io to reach Earth. In other words, when Earth was closer to Jupiter, the light had a shorter distance to travel, so it reached us faster. When Earth was farther away, the light had a longer journey, causing a delay. Romer's findings provided solid evidence that light has a finite speed. It does not travel instantaneously. Building on Rumer's observations, scientists in 1676 used the size of Earth's orbit and the measured time differences of Io's eclipses to calculate the speed of light. Their estimate was around 220,000 kilometers per second. Although this figure is lower than today's accepted value of 300,000 kilometers per second, 
it was an impressive achievement given the limitations of the time. From that point onward, one thing became certain. Light has a finite speed. But what exactly is that speed? Over the years, many scientists have used various methods and technologies to calculate the speed of light. Let us take a look at some of the most interesting ones. In 1849, a scientist named Fizeau conducted an experiment using a toothed wheel and predicted the speed of light to be approximately 315,000 kilometers per second. Then, in 1862, another scientist, Foucault, refined this measurement using rotating mirrors and arrived at a value of 298,000 kilometers per second. Among all these pioneers, Albert A. Michelson stands out as the scientist who conducted the most extensive experiments to calculate the speed of light. He is also well known for the famous Michelson-Morley experiment, which explored the nature of light and the existence of the so-called ether. Michelson's efforts to measure the speed of light spanned decades, from 1877 to 1931, as he worked tirelessly to achieve more accurate results. Among his many experiments, one stands out as particularly ingenious and groundbreaking. In 1926, Michelson used a rotating octagonal mirror, a mirror with eight faces, to measure the speed of light with unprecedented accuracy. This experiment provided the most precise value for the speed of light at that time. This is the model of the octagonal mirror that Michelson used. Each of its eight sides is a reflective mirror, and the entire structure is mounted on a rotating shaft connected to a motor. The speed of the motor can be precisely controlled and measured. The specialty of an octagonal mirror is its symmetry. Each side forms a 45-degree angle with the center. If you rotate the mirror exactly 45 degrees, the next side moves into the same position and the mirror looks identical. This feature is key to Michelson's ingenious experiment. Now, let us look at Michelson's experimental setup. The octagonal mirror is installed in an observatory atop Mount Wilson. A powerful arc lamp sends light toward face A of the octagonal mirror. Since face A is at a 45-degree angle to the light's path, the light is reflected 90 degrees and travels 35 kilometers to another set of mirrors on Mount San Antonio. These mirrors reflect the light back another 35 kilometers to Mount Wilson, but this time it strikes face C of the octagonal mirror. When the octagonal mirror is stationary, the light from the arc lamp reflects off face A, travels to Mount San Antonio, gets reflected by the mirrors there, and travels back. Then it reflects off face C and enters a telescope. Observers looking through the telescope see continuous light when the mirror is stationary. But what happens when the mirror starts to rotate? As the mirror rotates, face A aligns at 45 degrees to the light path only for a brief moment during its rotation. At this exact moment, a pulse of light is sent toward the distant mirrors at Mount San Antonio. This pulse of light gets reflected by the mirrors there and travels back. However, as the mirror rotates, by the time this light returns to Mount Wilson, face C is no longer at 45 degrees. So, the returning light cannot enter the telescope and the observer no longer sees the arc lamp's light. Now, Michelson gradually increases the speed of the motor. At a specific rotation speed, something remarkable happens. By the time the light completes the 70-kilometer round trip, the octagonal mirror has rotated precisely 45 degrees. This means face B, the next face in sequence, is now at 45 degrees to the light path. The returning light reflects perfectly into the telescope and the observer sees the arc lamp again. This phenomenon Seeing the light again through the telescope happens only at a specific speed of rotation. That is the speed at which, by the time light travels the 35 plus 35 equals 70 kilometers, the mirror has rotated exactly 45 degrees, allowing face B to take the place of face C and direct the light into the telescope. By knowing the speed of rotation, Michelson determines the time it takes for the mirror to rotate 45 degrees. Since the total distance travelled by the light is known, 70 kilometers, he calculates the speed of light using the formula. Speed equals distance divided by time. Through this method, Michelson measured the speed of light to be 
796 kilometers per second, compared to the presently accepted value of the speed of light, which is 299,792.458 kilometers per second, Michelson's measurement of 299,796 kilometers per second was remarkably accurate. The difference is just 4 kilometers per second, a truly incredible achievement especially considering this was measured almost 100 years ago. In summary, the speed of light, approximately 300,000 km per second, is not just a theoretical assumption, but a measured and verified value obtained through precise experiments. Today, countless systems rely on this value for their operations. For example, radar systems and GPS devices use the speed of light in their calculations and their exceptional accuracy serves as real-world proof of this value's correctness. Interestingly, even without these experiments, James Clerk Maxwell predicted the speed of light theoretically in 1865. As an expert in electric and magnetic fields, he calculated the speed of electromagnetic waves using fundamental constants from his electromagnetic theory. His calculation gave a value close to 300,000 kilometers per second. This value almost matched with the experimental value of speed of light available at the time. This groundbreaking work revealed that light itself is an electromagnetic wave. Both theoretical predictions and experimental measurements have consistently confirmed the speed of light, leaving no room for doubt. In the second half of the 20th century, even more accurate methods such as cavity resonance and laser interferometry were developed to refine the measurement of light speed. Today, the accepted value stands at 299,792.458 km per second. However, it is important to note that all these measurements determine the bidirectional speed of light. In these experiments, light is made to travel to a point and then back, and the speed is calculated based on the total journey. The one-way speed of light, light traveling in a single direction, has never been measured, and, as it turns out, one-way speed of light can never be directly measured. Why this is the case is a fascinating topic for another time. However, for practical purposes, this bidirectional measurement is valid unless there is reason to believe that the one-way and two-way speeds of light differ. If you found this video interesting, please like and share it. And for more fascinating science content, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you do not miss future episodes. Thank you.